Y'all, Charity already starting off on the wrong foot. Like, the fake, all the fakery, I just cannot. Like, she over here knocking on um, Grace's door early in the morning. She done got out of the bed trying to figure out who at her door. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry for the way I behaved last night. I was just so upset that they chose Jacob and not me too. And then she gonna sit up here and try to act like she wanna be a part of the, the music ministry again and all this other stuff. And so Grace was like, well, didn't you say that you didn't wanna do that anymore? Didn't you say you were done with singing? She was like, yeah, I said that, but I just wanna be a part of it in some way. So she already trying to set up a little scheme for Phil and y'all, Mark my words, she's setting herself up for failure as always. And I'm just like, girl, you don't never learn your lesson. Evil never wins like it never does. Like people be thinking they're ahead, but okay. You gonna see. I can't I cannot wait to see what karma is gonna come her way for trying this foolishness. But after she, you know, put on her little performance trying to be like, I'm just glad I got my sister back. And so Grace was like, Hey, amen. And then she left and closed the door and then she walked away and was looking all she did the Tyreek. If y'all um um if y'all watch Power, she was doing that. The um did I say that boy name right? Because he hurts my soul. I don't even remember if I said the boy name right. She did the Tariq. Like when he hugged Ghost the other day. <laughs> he was like, I would never, I would never betray you. And then was looking all crazy. When he was, of course, his face was behind his back as he was hugging him. Like, no, nah, you're doing the most, Heffa. It's not going to work. Y'all, Jacob's wife got the nerve to be online looking at uh, houses. And somebody has, like, this nice, big, spacious house with all kinds of newly installed appliances and things that are appealing to anybody, of course, if they are house hunting. She doing the most. I'm looking like, girl, she see that there's an open house today. And so she here for it. Like, she looking like, mm. and I'm like, girl, y'all ain't got no money. This man barely just got this job. Calm down. Unless they giving out advances, I'm going to need for you to calm down. Take a seat. Why wouldn't you want to just live there? You can be in your own quarters. You ain't got to. My thing is this. If you really feel that strongly about them, like you don't want no, nothing to do with them, you ain't got to fool with them. You can use them until you use them up or whatever because they have all of these resources at your fingertips that you don't have to pay for. Save your money and then go that route. Don't sit up here and get in a big old bill. Don't, don't be like uh, Toya and um, Eugene and be sitting in your biggest bill once you do sit up there and persuade Jacob to get into that house and then you're going to be able to afford it because something's going to come out and then that position going to be snatched away from her him and everybody else that's involved so yeah y'all need people just need to calm down i mean he barely just got this position and she doing the most already it's like girl uh wait until he actually has some money in hand and does she even work anymore every time i see her she just at the house i'm like girl please go somewhere and work go somewhere and do something because you're doing everything but actually doing something that actually can be of use to you and your family so Charity was kind of lured out of her room by her father playing the piano and singing Unforgettable. Um, and she came down the stairs and started singing it with him and, you know, invited her to sit down on the piano stool and all that good stuff. And it reminded her that she is the heart of the family, still the heart of the family. And I just wanted to say, sir, why are you lying to this heifer? She ain't the heart of nothing. She ain't even got a heart no more. She got an ice box where her heart used to be. I'm sorry. She is just everything but. But anyway, he was like, well, you know, I'm late. I got to um, make some travel plans. He's trying to plan his honeymoon. She said, honeymoon? Are you and mom getting back together? Are y'all getting um, married again? renew y'all vows and so he was like well you know that all depends on your mother and I'm like oh my gosh you know what I'm saying I'm just like somebody please stop <laughs> so Grace has gone to work at the church and Jacob is there in tow of course because you know he was picked in not charity <laughs> so <laughs> um 
she wanted him to go and handle some church business and Noah was actually waiting in her office for her to discuss the situation that happened last time. So she went in her office and when she finally did speak to him, the first thing she says is, so how was the flight? Girl, what you mean? How was the flight? What about the children? How many times do I have to tell y'all almost every single one of these recaps? What about the children? Why are everybody doing this? Girl, you had a whole baby by this man and he ain't know nothing about it. Not nothing, nah. Girl, and he was like, I don't understand why he ain't tell me all this happened. And, you know, she was trying to figure out, you know, what does his woman know? And, you know, he was like, well, she thinks I'm here visiting family or whatever. Apparently, the sun is getting out pretty soon, like tomorrow and all that good stuff. She ended up giving him the backstory about how she went to get an abortion. Then when she got to the place to get the abortion, she couldn't give him up. So she gave him up for adoption after she gave birth. He randomly contacted her after he turned 18 and his file was unsealed. And at the time, Sophia was 12. So, you know, she didn't want to blow her life up and all this other stuff. And he was just like the whole time, like, I don't understand why you didn't tell me. You should have told me that I had a child with you. Like, I, I deserved to know. So, you know, whatever. He was, she was just like, I'm going to make it right. And so he was like, you better he gets released tomorrow so y'all we gonna see how this go jacob ran into noah when he was on his way out of the building and you know was like hey what's going on with you how you doing how's isabel doing and he was like you know how's carissa doing and he was like oh, okay i'm on my way out by you know he was like what you doing here does Gigi know you here and so he was like yeah i just saw her and so he tried to play it off and talking about he was there visiting family, like his wife, girlfriend, or whatever she is to him. I don't forgot if they actually went through with the marriage or not, y'all. But anyway, um, his woman, that's why I'm going to keep on saying until I get confirmation again because I don't forgot. Um, and so he was about to try to leave again. And so he was like, oh, no, um, you want to stop by the house later and say hello to mom and dad? And so he was like, oh, no. He was like, I'm actually on my way to the airport. And so he was like, oh, okay. He was like, well, I'll let him know that you stopped by. And so he was like, actually, you know, don't. I don't want to sound, I don't want to seem rude or anything. So basically he's trying to cover his tracks every which way and be like, I don't even want them to know I was here. So don't even say nothing. So Lady May is out with her granddaughters and they're at this place and the granddaughters are like trying on clothes or something and talking and so she gets this message notification and when she checks it she zooms in on the amount that a check needs to be made payable <laughs> and she said the devil is a liar and threw the phone at the mirror and broke it, the mirror like this was all going back to when she did her um, women's empowerment event thing, whatever she calls it. And, you know, she, for some reason, seems to not understand that um, them people don't care nothing about what she thought was going to go down. They are charging her for the old and the new, and they don't feel as though she was you know in the right to sit up there and have that event and think that it was going to just be on the church you got to pay them dancers you got to pay the singers you got to pay everybody that was involved with that whole production the people who was playing the background music you got to pay for all them roses you got to pay for all the food you got to pay the caterers you got to pay everybody who was involved with your whole production and I don't know if that was 38000 or something dollars or if that was something else with some more zeros added because of the way it was zoomed in. But y'all, she was just looking like, no, nah, because she wanted to come up out of pocket for that. And she didn't think that was going to be what the case was going to be, but it is. So the meeting that Jacob ended up going to with Phil didn't go as planned. He was trying to figure out what was going on, what he needed to talk about, and it was the summer um, program that the children get involved with. And they go to this place that is focused on, you know, black people, our heritage, all that good stuff. 
and they were looking like, yeah, it's a little bit too expensive, and why can't they, you know, have diversity? Let's focus on that. And we have several programs that focus on diversity, and it is cheaper. And so they were like, wow. He was looking like, wow, you know, is there not enough money for that? And he basically was just looking at him like, it's not going to happen, so you might as well just get on over that. And so he was looking like, um, okay. <laughs> Jacob went to talk to his sister to see what's going on and to inform her that Phil said it's a no-go on the normal trip that the kids usually go on. And he was like, look, he said that if you got a problem with you got to come see him. So she was like, look, ain't nobody got time for this foolishness. Book all of the kids that's going to go for those slots and I'll pay the difference. So he was like, well, dang. It's nice to know that somebody in this family has been saving their money. <laughs> so then, of course, he wanted to be nosy to see if she was going to give up any information on why I knew it was there. And so she was like, yeah, I saw him. You know, I guess he was having some issues with Isabel. And I was just like, girl, <laughs> y'all, his wife is doing the most. She done popped up. At the open house, there are people actively there at the moment looking at it. And it looks like it's in a nice area. I'm trying to see if I can tell where it is. But, yeah, y'all. <laughs> um, but, yeah, she done popped up at these, these folks' open house doing the most. And I'm like, your husband literally just went there for his first day of work today. Girl, there's no check. Like, there's been no two weeks. There's been no month. There's been no week. Literally hasn't even been one hour since your husband's been at work and you're already out house hunting you need to stop so the person who is you know um the person who's selling the house for you know on behalf of the owners she sent clarissa the listing because it's of course her taste and i'm just like girl go somewhere and sit down so she will say, yeah, it is my taste, but, you know, we're kind of cash poor right now. And so she was like, you know, you can't ask your in-laws. The heifer said, I'd rather sell plasma. And I wanted to say, well, go do it then. Go do it then. Go do some actual work. Because I ain't seen you at work and I don't know how long. Do some work. Because I'm tired. Like, you have too many demands and you ain't got nothing to offer. Earl. Anyway. <laughs> she was like, you know what? Because, like I said, there are other people already there. She was like, let me see what I can work on. You know, I'm, I'm going to see what I can do, what I can come up with. Of course, because she really wants that house. And I'm like, girl, I don't understand what you're going to scheme up on unless you spread your thighs or something for that one man that wanted you that one time. But I don't know if he got money like that. So that might not pan out well for you. And, you know, you don't need to turn into the, you know, female version of your husband out here just spreading them for everybody. Um. Anyway. So her husband is now outside of the church house waiting on the young man who he was supposed to be counseling that playing basketball. So he pulls up in this vehicle, y'all. I don't know. I, I ain't good with uh, models of cars like that. I don't know if it's a Maserati or whatever. Y'all correct me down in the comment section. But yeah, he pulled up in this car with his friend in the passenger side driving crazy. And I'm just like, sir. So, you know, he seems like he's in good spirits and all this other stuff. And, you know, he is supposed to really spend that time with him. And I'm guessing that is still a part of his hustle. So he has to spend that time with him and talk to him and get a feel for what he's going through and what he's experiencing so that he can be the best him as, you know, whatever he's trying to aspire to do. Because in this capacity, he's supposed to still be a life coach to him. So he done told old boy, um, you're he's gonna be in the passenger side. You need to get in the back. I ain't even know it had a back seat that car is so small. So anyway, y'all know how big Jacob is. He is tall. Like ain't nobody got time. He done squeezed in the car and the board and peeled off. And I'm just like, why? You doing too much. <sighs> so charity's still dumb and um I'm tired. So she done sat up here and met up with Phil to say to him like um i don't know if i could do this he said that i'm the heart of the family okay girl oh gosh you're just so dumb this man is gonna take her out to dry i i am here for it. i cannot wait for it to happen because every time you look around she gets screwed over and it's like for some reason she don't understand 
that she is just the whipping board. I, I, I don't understand why she don't get that. Every time you look up, things always fall, crumble, and all that all around her. But for some reason, she don't see it. And I'm just like, well, you'll see it when it's too late, as always. And then Nat is mad and buttered her up. And he was like, do you think I offered you that position? Um, basically to bribe her and you know she was like well you don't have to say it if you don't really mean it and took a sip of wine which she don't need to be drinking <sighs> and you know it seemed like he trying to act like he is actually here for her and you know kind of like her trying to flirt a little bit and so she of course is here for this it's like anybody show you the slightest bit of attention you are here for it like stop like why are you so gullible this man is using you why he came at you sideways and told you, if you do this for me against your family, then I will do this for you. That's called bribery. Like, why are you so dumb? He does not care about you. He did not see any potential in you. Only the potential to give ama amazing information to him that only you would be able to get because you are the only dummy in the family who is stupid enough to allow him to take over your mind. Like, girl, you're stupid. So, the guy who is, um, who uh, Jacob is, you know, the life coach to, he's talking to him. He's at the basketball court, inside court. And earlier he actually asked him, has he ever played basketball with a football before? So, he literally was being, like, for real when he said that. He had a football in his hand. Jacob had a football in his hand. I was just like, okay, y'all doing too much. Anyway, so he was talking to him, and then essentially he was like, look, you know, I'm going to do me, and every time I do the slightest little thing, I don't want you to have to run back to HR or whoever and tell them nothing about me. So he tried to bribe him with $10,000. <laughs> he literally like had a roll, like a bank roll of it. I was just like, why you got that? So, he was like, whoa, 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 put your money away. <laughs> I was like, no. So then he going to try to make it seem like, oh, well, I was just testing you anyway to see, you know, if you're going to take the bait or whatever. I was like, bro, yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, yeah, right. So, Grace and Phil finally meet up, and he is not happy about finding out that she has paid all this money for some slots for the um, summer um, festivities for the children. And he was like, well, you're gonna have to take that up with Bob. And so she was like, uh, I'd be happy to. Like, and he was like, you do know that it's only be gonna become more and more. And so she was like, yeah, like $100,000. He was like, you don't have any money like that, do you? And she was like, yeah, I do. And I was like, girl, you didn't have to read. <laughs> you had to set it off like that, but. Then, you know, before he left, she was like, you know, I told my sister that I would ask you if she could be the minister of music again, and I assured her that she would say no, and then, like, he cut her off and was like, yeah, that's the problem with that, you know, because, like, he had that meeting earlier, and he doing the most, and she even looked like, okay, something ain't right about this, because he said what he said and walked away and said that it was fine, and he has been dead set against everything before, so I'm like, girl, I'm gonna need for your instincts to kick in a little bit faster, because it's common sense that some foolishness is going down. The cousins are spending time together before um, Grace's daughter goes off to college, and at this point, she's kind of making it seem like she's not even gonna go, and she's gonna get a refund from uh, the school for the classes that she enrolled in. And I'm just like, girl, you're doing the most. So I don't know if she really gonna go through with that or not because she just is not inspired for nothing. So anyway, um, Bishop Greenleaf met, um, I don't know why I can't think of her name, but the girl who was like the secretary, the big black girl with the glasses, met her out in the church parking lot by the sign, the actual church sign, and she passed off a folder that had some kind of information in it. And so she was like, no matter what you do, you cannot tell anybody that you got that from me because that can mess me up and all this other stuff. And he was like, yeah, you can count on me, I promise. So when he drove off, she was like, this does not seem like church. And I was just like, y'all do it the most. <laughs> Grace is talking to her daughter, and her daughter actually just came in 
from hanging out with her cousin because like I told y'all in the last episode, she lives in that little cabin thing that Noah was living in when he was doing the security thing. And she was like, you know, I got to talk to you about something. So she was like, I got to talk to you too. So, you know, about to see what's going on. Grace told her daughter what the situation was as far as her having a brother. And her plans to help him is to send money. So her daughter is looking at her like, um, yeah, he doesn't want money. He wants his mom. You're his mother. That's what he wants. And so she's looking at her sideways like, girl, mm -mm. So she ain't here for her mom right now. And she done told her, look, I don't even want you to go with me to Hampton. I'll drive myself. So she was like, no, you can't drive yourself all that way. She was like, I can do whatever I want. I was like, girl. So she in her feelings and she done stormed off. So the information that was in that file shows that um, it was like two days after Hope and Harmony actually took over. So in all seriousness, in actuality, Lady May don't owe nothing. So Hope and Harmony are going to have to be the ones to reimburse her or whatever. So... She looking like, no, like, it's crazy how she put everything together. She put all that stuff together. She was like, well, who got this information for you? And she figured out who it was without him giving a hint or saying who it was or any of that. And she was like, this is not the way to go. We have to get our hearts right. It's just a lot. And, you know, he just always feels like he's at a loss whenever he's trying to do something for her, which in this instance is he's trying to help get the church back. He just feels like, well, dang, I done did all this and it still ain't working in your favor. You feel like it ain't, you know, it's not enough. So he just kind of at a loss right now. Then Carissa done sat up here and showed Jacob the house. So the way that she trying to get around all of this is to see about selling the land that the real church was, you know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's across from Calvary and all that. And it was land they actually did purchase. And so she was like, we should be able to sell the land and get a decent amount in order to do a down payment for the house. Yo, I don't understand people. I guess it's because of the way I grew up. Land is very valuable. So despite whether or not they go that route and explain or show that it's a terrible mistake if somehow they actually do sell the land, you know, what could happen, but I just hate when people sit up there and be like, oh, nope, I'm selling this land, and I'm gonna sell this land to people to get me a quick piece of change, and then the land actually ends up being way more valuable than what you sat up there and sold it for, because you were so greedy for some money. Like, I'm just, I cannot, and my grandfather left behind acres and acres of land, different places, and our family, a lot of our family members have built homes on the land and my daddy is one of them uh, a couple of his sisters did as well and it's just crazy to me how people are quick to just sell land it's like that's crazy that is very valuable it's more valuable than the money that them people throwing at you for the land because they know a lot of times i would tell you there have been people who have rolled up on my daddy on my other family members and been like, whose land is this? And, you know, can I buy this? And, you know, I want to do this with this part of the land. Can I do it? My daddy has been like, nah, my daddy left this to us. So, no. Like, people do not understand how valuable land is, apparently. And it's had my nerves up. So, anyway, she's showing him the pictures. and was like, isn't this nice? Isn't this great? And so, he was like, look, we have to pray on this. So she was like, you know, my name is signed right next to yours on that deed. So I didn't even have to ask you, but I did. And so he was like, yeah, you did ask me. And I appreciate you asking me, but please pray on it and just give me a week. If I haven't heard anything in a week, then, you know, we can, you know, discuss that, go forward or whatever. So Grace's daughter, Sophia, is tired in her spirit of all the stuff that her mama doing. She ain't here for it no more. She cannot stand being anywhere near her any longer. And she is going to Hampton. She has gone so far as to call her father, who has flown in, that she's going to pick up from the airport. And he's going to drive with her 
to Hampton, so she's not gonna be alone. So her mama rolled up on her and was like, I love you, and she didn't say nothing. And she was like, Sophia, I said, I love you. And so she was like, yeah, I heard you. And then she like sped off. And so she ain't told nobody nothing. Her cousin rolled up and was like, where is Sophia going? And so her grandmama was like, to college. She was like, what? Didn't she? I mean, she said she wasn't going. What happened? And so she was like, I don't know. And even before she came up from her cabin to see what was going on, Grace was having a moment. You could tell she was, you know, frazzled. And her mama asked her if she wanted to talk about it. And she was just like, no. You could tell how shaken she was, how shaken up, rather, she was by, you know, everything that had just transpired so she was just like and went in the house i guess to go cry jacob is actually talking to god as he has never done in quite a, a while i'm trying I'm, I'm trying to be petty let me stop jacob hasn't talked to god in a while let me stop because <laughs> he just urged my soul y'all all that cheating he was doing before but anyway he actually trying to act right this time so he's taking a moment to talk to god ask god what he needs to do in order to, you know, go forward with some sort of plan for that land. And, you know, if it's meant for it to happen, he wants him to, you know, give him a sign. And while he's talking to God, he's at that um, basketball gymnasium on the inside, the um, inside gym. And he's playing basketball with a football and just tossing it around he's talking to God trying to figure out you know what it is that God wants him to do with that land so y'all Charity is at the church trying to butter up the secretary and um, get some information out of her and she was just about to get some information out of her about Noah because she was like you need to give me something because she gave her some kind of information what I don't know and so she was like Noah. So she was like, what about Noah? And then Lady May came in. And so she asked her old girl, the um, secretary, to walk with her. And so she was like, okay, of, of course. So she wanted to walk and talk with her and essentially let her know that she knows what went down between her and Bishop. She didn't even have to say anything about it. Like, she just said all kinds of random stuff. And she was just like, you know, yeah, you know. I thought to call you and she was like yeah he thought that you actually should have executed that that's what you need to do next time something like this arises and you know I might actually need you in the future so I'm gonna need for you to avoid getting canned in the process and so you know she was here for that and you know she was just letting her know also she gave her an envelope that was a check enclosed for Connie for the overages that were incurred for um, Day with Lady May. And she just wanted her to be like, look, tell everybody that I pay my debts. You ain't gonna sit up here and say I owe nobody. I pay my, I pay what I owe. I paid y'all what I owe y'all. <laughs> so after all was said and done, Grace gets a phone call from her son, AJ. And he was like, you know, I'm going to be going to a, a halfway house and all that. And essentially she was just like, okay, so are you calling because you're going to, you know, need a place to stay and all this other stuff? And so he was like, yeah. So she's going to give him some money and, you know, she's going to see about him having somewhere to stay. And he wasn't really all that emotional or anything. He was just kind of like, yeah, I'm calling her because I need help. So let me just see and reach out to this heifer because I'm here because of her. So, yeah. And, you know, I don't know if that's a de, uh, defensive mechanism, me, uh, defensive mechanism, excuse me, or if he really genuinely does not care whether or not he eventually has some sort of connection to her because she is indeed his mother. But, yeah, we're going to see how it unfolds. Um, he did ask about Sophia and, you know, he did his research. So he was like, that is her name, right? So she was like, yes. Because he did ask, you know, does she know about me and all that? But yeah, y'all, this was an interesting episode. It's pretty good. I foresee Charity being screwed over yet again. Every single season, she gets screwed over in one way or many. And I'm going to be sitting there looking like, I told you so. You ain't had no business trusting yet another dummy and being a dummy as usual. Anyway, y'all. 
I hope y'all enjoyed this recap. Y'all have a good one. Like this if you want to. Subscribe if you want to. Share this if you want to. I hope y'all have a good one, and I'll see y'all next time.